I can't put into words the sigh of relief that Leafs fans would have, like getting that news that Austin Matthews will be a Toronto Maple Leaf for an extended period of time. And I mean, we'd all be hoping for an eight year extension just to say like, you know what? We got him. Like we have him for his career, but even then, I mean, he was calculated last time. So I wouldn't put it past him and his agent to signing another weird one and betting on himself even more. And again, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Matthew's next contract, because we just saw Nathan McKinnon, become the highest paid player in the NHL by a hundred thousand yeah, dollars. We'll His extension's going to kick in next season. He signed an eight year deal for 12.6 million a year, a little bit more than Connor McDavid's making. He's coming in at 12.5 million. So what do you think Matthew's next contract is going to look like? Because I would be stunned if he doesn't become the highest paid player in the NHL. He's going to be the highest paid player in the NHL. I had someone asked me recently, recently, last couple of days, if I thought Matthews could command more than McKinnon. And I said, he can and he will. He has a Hart Trophy, two Maurice Rocket Richard trophies, a Ted Lindsay Trophy. I know people are saying, oh, McKinnon has a cup. But at the end of the day, that's a team. That's a team accomplishment, not an, not an individual accomplishment. And even from a negotiation side, and I'm sure the Avalanche knew this as well, Joe Sakic and co. Did anyone even have the thought in their mind that McKinnon could walk away next year? No. No. Like, even if they didn't win the cup, or they were still a really competitive team. They have McCarr locked up. McCarr was going to resign. Matthews, and maybe it's a Leafs fandom thing where we're all nervous all the time. But I'll put it this way. We wouldn't be absolutely flabbergasted if Matthews left. Like, it would suck and we'd be crying, but no one could say that like this was like a punch in the face surprise. But again, it's time. It's two years from now or one year from now, depending on when he signs. He's going to be the highest paid player in the league. He'll be the highest paid player in the league. If I did guess a number, I'd say somewhere around 13 or 13.5 million. And then uh, McDavid will surpass him after that as time goes on. There's also the matter of, if we're just looking at dollar amounts, the cap's going to start to creep up now, like post-COVID bullshit. So, I mean, what we can look at it percentage-wise, how it compares to McKinnon and other players. But in terms of a raw number, I don't think there is any doubt that it's going to start with a 1-3. Like, I really do feel that way. What's your guess? Yeah, I think so too. And I think you nailed it with the cap situation, with the cap continuing to creep up year after year now that we've you know gotten away from all the COVID stuff and – the flat cap, these guys are going to start to get paid more. And we just saw McKinnon become the highest paid player in the league. Matthews will become the highest paid player in the league. And I agree. I think it's going to be somewhere in the 13 million range. Mm -hmm. And then when McDavid becomes a free agent, he's going to be the highest paid player in the league. So, and that's the thing. You can't really look into it like, oh my God, Nathan McKinnon's the new highest paid player in the league. It's all a timing thing, right? It's right. when, when do these guys contracts come up? What's the situation? It's going to be one after the other, but I, I agree. I think Matthews will be in the 13 million range and it's not, it's not going to look that bad at all. If the cap keeps going up, the question mm -hmm. is, what do you do with some of these other guys? Like when Nylander's contract is up and Marner and you know, what, how, what decisions do you make at that point? And how much you're paying those guys? Right. I think yeah. those will be even bigger decisions, honestly, because Matthews, you kind of, you just give them, you write them the check for, 13, 13.5 million and away you go. I think to me, and like now we're looking ahead again, the whole percentage of the cap thing. If we looked at it from when they signed Matthews, Marner, Nylander, none of us would have a problem with them, them signing at the same percentage of the cap. I mean, people could say Nylander could demand more and maybe, but in that ballpark, none of us would really have a problem with that. And I think I will say, and I don't think many Leafs fans would argue with me. You don't hear this too often in sports and the NHL specifically. Tavares, if he stays with the Leafs, is going to get take less. So that would free up cap space. Where I do see curveballs coming at the Leafs, and when I say curveballs, these are good decisions to have, is if someone fires up the lineup. Like if Robertson is a star or Sandy and Lilligren can really develop or some other prospect becomes a big star player, that's where things can get complicated because then you have decisions to be, to be made. But in terms of the numbers and percentage of the cap, I don't think any 
uh, any Leafs fans have a problem with the numbers being the same. And Dubas made the point. He said when he was being interviewed, we have a lot of cap flexibility because two years from now and three years from now, it's Matthews, Nylander, Marner, and Tavares freeing up. So it allows them to make the decisions. And I'm sure those decisions were calculated years past when they signed them. They didn't want them all to be at the same time. I actually even heard, I remember reading someone's opinion and whether it was opinion or they had a source that, I don't know if you remember the tank year for Matthews. The Leafs actually played Nylander the last year of the the, the last uh, few games of the season. Like they got him his ten games to take one year off of the LC, and the assumption was even that, but thinking that far ahead was that they knew they were going to draft, you know, in the top five coming up, and they were going to get a star, uh, someone who's going to enter the lineup right away, and hopefully a star player. And they were fairly certain Marner was going to be in the lineup the next year as well. And they didn't want Nylander, Matthews, and Marner all finishing their ELCs at the same time. So I'm sure, again, it was figured out that way when these guys all extended. But that's going to be fun in Leafland, man. Can't oh, yeah. wait. Yeah. You said it, man. Two years from now, even looking at the decor, Muzzin has two years left on his deal. Brody has two years left on his deal. Nice. So all those guys are going to be UFAs at the same time. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of cap space available, a lot of decisions to be made for Kyle Dubas. So we'll see how that all plays out. 